the USO tour abroad, she was kissed and groped against her will by comedian Al Franken, who is now a fairly well-known Democratic senator representing the state of Minnesota. Trace Gallagher has been on this story all day, and he joins us with the latest. Trace? Tucker, the allegations you mentioned come from the radio and television personality who says the growing Me Too movement is what gave her the courage to fight back against a sitting U.S. senator. Radio news anchor Leanne Tweeden is accusing Al Franken actually in two separate incidents that happened during that USO tour back in 2006 when Franken was then a cast member for Saturday Night Live, including one that happened during a rehearsal for a skit that Tweeden would consider sexual assault. Here she is. Put his hand on the back of my head, and he mashed his face against. I mean, it happened so fast, and he just mashed his his lips against my face, and he stuck his tongue in my mouth so fast. I remember I pushed him off with my hands, and I said, "If you ever do that to me again, I'm not going to be so nice about it the second time." The second incident is this picture taken on a plane ride home from the tour, where she claims that Al Franken groped her while she was asleep. Al Franken says he doesn't recall the rehearsal incident the way Tweeden does, but he did apologize, saying, and I'm quoting, I respect women. I don't respect men who don't. And that fact that my own actions have given people a good reason to doubt that makes me feel ashamed. As for the photograph, Franken says, quote, I don't know what was in my head when I took that picture, and it doesn't matter. There's no excuse. I look at it now, and I feel disgusted with myself. Democratic leaders immediately called for a Senate Ethics Committee investigation with Chuck Schumer saying, quote, sexual harassment is never acceptable and must not be tolerated. I hope and expect that the Ethics Committee will fully investigate this troubling incident as they should with any credible allegation of sexual harassment. Al Franken says that he will fully cooperate with the investigation, though Politico is now reporting there's already talk among some Democrats that because the picture we showed you earlier is so damaging, that Al Franken might be forced to resign. Tucker. Trace Gallagher from L.A. Thanks a lot, Trace. Chad McMoore is a journalist and a frequent guest on the show. He joins us from New York tonight. So, uh, Chad, I know Al Franken pretty well. I've known him for a long time. I honestly never thought of him as a sexual harasser. I have thought of him a lot as a not a very nice person who, and this is an open secret in Washington, who mistreats his staff. He's a screamer who takes credit for other people's work, is basically horrible to those beneath him. And all of that, and I've seen it, has been excused for many years because his politics are mainstream politics here. He's a liberal. And I see this as a theme. Like, if you have the right politics, you get away with kind of whatever you want. You're excused by the left. Am I making that up in my mind? You certainly aren't making that up in your mind. That is that that is how it is. Look at Hollywood. Look at everything that's happening now. All these allegations that are coming down. Uh, and even just aside from basic hypocrisy, right, we have the everyone, everyone on the left, especially who's coming after Roy Moore, who's been coming after Roy Moore. Now, you know, when it's their own team, they don't know what to do. This isn't merely hypocrisy. There's something far more sinister, I believe, happening on the left when they've built a, a party platform that basically tells people like women, like gays, like blacks, that you're victims and we're here to protect you and the other side hates you. And then what happens when people come out, especially in these allegations now, well, sometimes the women are attacked uh, by the left. You know, uh, Joy Behar famously called Bill Clinton's uh, accusers tramps. Uh, so you, it, it became, becomes even more sinister when you realize that they don't care about these people, about these groups that they purport to be standing up for. They only care about one thing, and that one thing is power. Yeah, accumulating power. I've always yeah. thought that the root of all wisdom was knowing how flawed you are, and that's a hedge against self-righteousness. But I've noticed, and particularly in the case of Al Franken, an overweening self-righteousness. I mean, Franken is the first one to stand up in a hearing and lecture people about how he's a lot better than they are. Do you see a connection between outward expressions of self-righteousness and people's secret personal behavior? Am I imagining that too? Uh, I, I absolutely, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, there, I heard someone say the other day, as soon as you hear a man call himself a feminist, you can start the clock on the rape charges. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it was uh, Milo Yiannopoulos who said that. Uh, it's absolutely true. The more your virtue signaling, you see this a lot with race, right? And yeah. I've noticed this my entire life. You see this a lot with with these sort of white liberal race virtue signalers who, who are all day long talking about Black Lives Matter. Yet they're the first person to to cross the street if a black man's walking towards them late at night. They're the first person to be, you know 
know, very rude to their uh, their their brown skin nanny or what have you. It's it's, it's so obvious that, the, that there's some sort of cover going here. When you see someone who is trying so hard to virtue signal that they care for people, uh, the, these groups of people. Well, maybe you should look up look at that. You know, if it's they need true. to collectivize people like it's that. It's true. I I once asked Al Sharpton if he was a bigot, and he said to me in a moment of candor, he said, you know, the only group I really don't like, white liberals, because they patronize me. <laughs> and I thought, that, you know, there's something to this. I don't, I'm not a shrink, so I don't fully understand the syndrome here, but it's related. People who have thoughts they're ashamed of tend to attack other people uh, and accuse them of having those thoughts. I oh, absolutely. I completely agree with you. And that, and that spans the gamut when, you know, people who maybe are a little too puritanical and some things turn out to have the, uh, the nastiest secrets behind their closet as well, you know? Yeah. And so I would say Senator Franken uh, is in that category. Chadwick, thank I you. That was right. insightful.